So we're back in the workshop again and today we're going to look at tables of offsets and the body plan. Now boats, boat plans consist of three drawings usually and a table of offsets. We've got the shear line plan, the plan from above and the body plan. Now at the moment we don't need to concern, to concern ourselves with either of these two but what we do need to make the moulds which are basically the bits of wood we bend the planking round to form our boat are the station plans now these are all views of the boat cut through these lines now these are the station lines and each one of these is a station now they're numbered BT 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ST now you might be wondering why have you got two different ones on two different sides well the simple answer is at this point the boat is at its widest form and if we stuck all these if we drew pictures of them all the way across and stuck all these on top of each other you wouldn't be able to make out the shape of the boat or the shape of the moulds as they're actually a form of because some of these lines would intersect and go over each other and be on top of each other so what they've done is they've cut the boat at the widest point and put one half on one side of the line and the forward half on the other side of the line and therefore none of the lines overlap so that's why it looks the way it does so that's from the front end looking back to a midships and this is from a stern looking to midships. Now we need to reproduce these shapes on both sides of the line in wood and the way we do that is to plot out the table of offsets. Now this is our table of offsets and basically what it is is divided into three parts heights, half breadths and stations so what we have are heights above a baseline which we're going to set as the edge of our piece of board half breadths from a center line which we're going to draw up the middle of our board and stations now these are the individual lines that we saw here these are the stations that would be our center line and that would be our baseline across there now each one takes three measurements so the heights we start with the height of the bottom now the height of the bottom let me move back again is this one here now that's the height of the bottom above the shear line so each one has a different height obviously because the bottom of the boat is curved if it was a flat bottom boat stern to forward it would be all one height um, now we've got the chine now this part here is the chine it's the point where the side and the bottom meet and uh, that has some markings on it too we'll come to those in a moment and the shear line now the shear line is this line up here it's where the top of the side planking ends the very top of the deck of the boat effectively so those are our heights and the half breadths now these are normally the same we normally have a bottom chine and a shear now if we look at our diagram here it comes to a V point so the lowest point is the bottom now we aren't going to have any half breadths from there because the next point from there is the chine and the next point we plot and that's a straight line so if it was a round, um, a round bottom boat with a keel or a flat bottom boat this this dimension here would change so the it would get further and closer to the center line and therefore you would soon have um, a half breadth to the bottom but we don't have that so we're just going to have the two measurements for the half breadths so let's show you how we plot it out each one of these consists of three numbers now let's pick the stern transom for example ST it is 0, 057. Now that means you measure up from the bottom on the centre line 
0 feet, 5 inches and 7 eighths. And then the chine would be 0 feet, 10 inches and 2 eighths. Now these are heights above the baseline, which is this line here. So that's the bottom, and that is 0 feet, 5 inches and 7 eighths for this line, the stern transom. And the chine is 10 inches, 2 eighths above the baseline. Now that's not much help, so we need a half breadth measurement as well. So if we take this point here, we'll go, well, we always go across and then up. So we always start with a half breadth and then a height. So we'll take the half breadth, which is this one here, and that is, we'll do it for number five, shall we? Uh, that is one foot nine inches zero eighths. So number five is here, so we go across one foot nine inches and zero eighths and then we want a height measurement for number five at the chine and that is zero nine four so we go up zero nine four and that brings us to the point exactly here so we go across and then up and it's it's just a simple case of plotting coordinates and you don't need to draw a grid or anything like that. You just need a few things. Now to draw the body plan of a boat from the uh, table of offsets, you need a few things. You need a sheet of plywood, or in this case I'm going to use a sheet of hardboard just because it's available. Um, it's got to be wider and taller than the biggest station on the boat measured from the baseline. The next thing you need, good pencil and pencil sharpener. A decent fine line pen for inking in lines. A metre rule, graduated in inches or centimetres, dependent on what your table of offsets are. And normally I would use a square, but obviously I'm running out of room here, so I've decided to use a saw. Now, you can use a saw too. Each saw has on it, generally, a 90 degree angle on the handle when it's butted up against a straight line. Now, there is a way of working out whether this is square. And simply, you take a straight line off one edge of the table. So, now, that's set square. So we draw a line down it. And to check it square, we simply flip it over. Now, if the line is still parallel to the back of the saw, that's a perfectly square saw. And we can use that for marking out squares and 90 degree lines. So we know that's square, so we'll use that as a square. Now, you can see that I've marked out one section of the boat already. So I think we'll go on now and mark out another, and we'll start with station number four. So, now we know that the bottom doesn't have a half breadth, but it does have a height. So we're going to mark the height of the bottom to start with. Now we use the edge of the board as our starting point. So the height of the bottom is three inches six eighths. So we'll mark that three inches one, two, three, four, five, six eighths. There we go. Just there. So we always mark the station we're doing on the body plan. It's much easier that way. So we now go across and then up for every measurement. So the next one we want is the chine. So half breadth of the chine is one foot ten inches and four eighths. So we'll go across one foot ten and four eighths which is actually half an inch so we'll mark that there and then we want to come up and mark the chine so the height measurement of the chine is eight inches five so what I do is I take my rule my square edge and I just draw a very faint line along that mark vertically 
and then I take my ruler and I go up 8 inches and 5 eighths so 8 inches and 5 eighths there and we just mark that one like that and then we want to do the shear line now so the half breadth of the shear line is 2 foot 3 inches and 3 eighths so that's 27 inches and 3 eighths which is there and the same as before, we take our square and we just draw a simple line vertically like that and we'll extend that line a little bit just up there like so and now we want the height of the shear as number 4 which is 1, 8 and 3 so it's 1 foot 8 inches and 3 eighths which is just there so that's there. Now we take that measurement and we mark it on our centre line. One foot, eight inches, and three eighths. And we just mark that on our centre line as well. And now we have to mark draw all these marks together. So what we do, we mark our bottom mark and our chine mark and we draw a line between them. Now when I'm drawing a line, I always start from the dot that I've made and work inwards to the middle. That way you don't overrun the line. And then we go from our chine mark to our shear line mark, like so. There we go. And from our shear line mark to our second shear line mark, which is on the centre line like so there we are now I'll just ink this in for you so you can see what I'm doing ink this in quickly It's always good practice to work from the edges of a line, the ends of a line, to the centre. It always stops the chance of overrunning and going too far. There we go. And that is half of our station at number four. And all we do is repeat that process on the other side of the centre line. And we'll just mark that one with a little four, like so. And that is how you mark out the body plan. We need to turn these into planks of wood the right shape. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we take a rule, and the corner of our chine mark here, we line that up, with the point of the top of the shear line, which is this one here, and the centre line. So we're looking at number four there, so we'll line that up with that, and that up with there, and we'll just draw a line a few inches long. There we go, that's all it has to be. It doesn't have to be anything special, just a few inches long. And I'll show you why in a minute. Now, then we take some nails. Now at the end of every line, about quarter of an inch away, half inch away, we put a nail. Now it's a flat headed nail with a thin head. And what we do is we put the head of the nail on the line, like so, and we just tap it in, like that. And we do the same at this end. There we go. So that line now has two nails embedded in it. And we do the same on this line. Like so. And the same on the centre line as well. Now, this is quite an easy process to do. 
Then what you do is you need your piece of wood. Now, I'm just using a rough old plank here because I've actually made my moulds already. And we just lay it down so that the edge of the straight edge of the plank is on the line and right on those nail heads. It's sat on those nail heads. It saves you having to cut a straight line. So we know that that's level and straight. And then we just take the hammer and knock those in. And then when we flip it over, in fact some of the nails have stayed in there, look, we end up with two marks. And all we do is we take our ruler and our pen or our pencil in this case and we join up those marks and the same on the same here And at this point, we decide how thick we want the plank, and then we head over to the bandsaw. Now I've decided that I want this set for 10 centimetres roughly, so that this plank is going to be 10 centimetres wide. Now, we cut it on the side that was up against the nails. That's the side that goes up against the fence. So now, we take our piece of wood, and we butt it up so that the straight edge that was on the line is against the fence. Now we've cut out our plank of wood, we can place it on those lines, put it up against those marks, and we can see that it is exactly parallel to all those marks. It's a nice accurate cut and we can do that for this line, this line and the other two lines we're going to draw here, here and here, the other three lines and then you end up with a station mould. So when you've finished you end up with a station mould that looks like this. I've simply joined these pieces together with butt blocks on the back. I've just glued and screwed and the thickness of this piece of wood, it's only a dinghy so I've used 12 mil or half inch thick larch planking just happened to have some lying around and it's perfect for these it saws nicely it cuts a nice clean edge and it takes glue well so this is quite a quick method for making your station moulds now you're probably wondering how we get all these moulds at exactly the right height well that's nice and simple and it's one measurement from the shear line to the top of the board on your body plan, you will have drawn a shear line across the top. Now, up here, you'll see there is another line just there. Now, what we do is we measure from the shear line of the mould you're making to that line there, like so. And we take that measurement and we just simply write it on the back of the station. Now we take that measurement that we've just written on the back of our station and we measure down from the shear line which is here and we make a mark and we do the same on the other leg and then what I do is I put in a little batten and I've simply nailed that in place and it lines up with both the marks and then I can drop the, drop the station onto a former and in this case I've actually built my own built my own former um, it's actually a, a permanent feature in the workshop but it involves these little cross braces that are perfectly vertically above each other now all you have to do is make a mark in the center of the shear line which lines up with a piece of string stretched fore and aft over your building mold and this will put everything in the right line height wise and center line wise and then you know that your jig and your building mold is all perfectly square 
Now we can start building the transoms fore and aft, but I think we'll leave that till next week, don't you?